Welcome along, David Orr, joined by Graham Cunningham and Fan Berry. It's Kazoo Derby Week, a huge week in the racing calendar. Started on such sad news, GC, the passing on Sunday morning of Lester Piggott, aged 86, a genuine giant of the sport. Yeah, hi Dave, hi everyone. It, it is, it's a sad start to Derby Week, uh, but what an epic life, what an epic career. And although you never want to depart, you never want to see a legend depart, there's something highly appropriate, Dave, about Lester Piggott departing at the start of Derby Week, Oaks Week, Coronation Cup Week, the three races, the crown jewels of Epsom, which he absolutely dominated for decades and decades. Absolutely. And, and Fran, you're a former jockey yourself. What, what was it that made Lester different in the saddle? What made him so special? Uh, for me, Dave, he had an aura about him, you know, as a kid growing up, uh, Lester Piggott was, you know, getting maybe to the end of his time, but he still had that dominant um, aura about him. And, uh, you know, he was uh, coming over to ride for Vincent O'Brien. I can remember that quite well. And he just was a mold breaker in the way he dominated both Ireland and England. He uh, was, you know, quite taking as a young, young person getting into the game or following the game. And uh, I was lucky enough to meet him a good bit in recent years and uh, you can see a bit of charm about him and uh, a wily way about doing things and uh, you know like he was a mold breaker for jockeys as well he put jockeys i think into another le level as in you know he broke broke from his retainer to go freelance uh, and put himself up there and i think that brought jockeys on as a whole uh, profile wise and i think he was a groundbreaker in a lot of ways and uh, you know his legacy lives on now i think Absolutely does, GC. We've got Leicester's career in numbers, and the numbers themselves are just staggering when you see the number of career, career winners, the classic wins, the derby wins. He was the ultimate go-to man for the big day. Yeah, it, it's, it's absolutely astonishing, both in terms of quality, quantity, Dave, and longevity. He rode his first winner at my local course, I think, Haydock Park, I think at the age of 12. And genius is not too strong a word to use when you're talking about people like Lester Pigger and like other sporting geniuses if you look at Ali or Tyson or Michael Jordan or Maradona uh, all these absolute superstars it seemed like they came out of the womb fully formed both in terms of talent and temperament the temperament's very important to any sportsman and my memories of him we all sort of look at these legends when they pass away through our own selfish but somewhat personal prism and my first significant memory I hitchhiked to Epsom uh, for the 1990, uh, 1977 derby and watched Lester Piggott lift the minstrel home from Willie Carson and Hot Grove in an epic finish. Fifteen years later I was in the very lucky position I was reporting for time form when he won the last of his 30, 30 classics on Rigo de Triano and if you remember that he had a Hall of Fame career even before I was even aware of him for 20 odd years. To be going from you know, the early to mid 50s, right at the top of your profession, right through until the 90s, it, it's, it's, I think it is unprecedented. It's pretty much unprecedented in, in any sport, let alone horse racing. And, and Fran, how difficult is it for a jockey to have that sort of longevity, the battles with the scales, everything that goes along with being a top flight flat jockey? <coughs> the, the, for, to be doing that for so many years, just what, what sort of sacrifices was he making? Oh, ah, yeah, and it was a time before, um, you know, facilities were there as guards, dietitians, and the weights were quite low back then, Dave, as well. Obviously, that put him under pressure to ride every day. And I think the biggest testament that I can come up with for Lester Piggott is you know the year in jail five years retired to come back and ride um like i was if you're out in your 20s and 30s and miss a month you know it takes a week to get fully back right and sharp on the back of that he came back after five years and two weeks later he's winning a breeders cup mile and uh you know that's just pure talent and muscle memory and you know obviously physically he wasn't as sharp maybe as he was but just the mind was so good and the talent was still there Fran, you make a really interesting point there, an interesting phrase is muscle memory. I, I read an interview with Lester Piggott that he gave many, many years ago, and he talked about balance and poise, and moving just an inch either way in the saddle could affect the way a horse galloped and, and, and handled himself. Does that resonate with you as a, uh, as a former top jockey? 
Very much so. And, uh, you know, Leicester with his bum up in the air, as you say, um, he was caught, uh, got to put it somewhere. You know, he's a big man in comparison to his com- uh, contemporaries of the time and the balance he showed, Dave, uh, Graham, around Epsom in particular for lengthy road. He never interfered with a horse and people said he was mm. very nimble. And that was that natural, that was the natural thing. I don't think he can train that. That was the natural part of it. Yeah. Then the, the mind and the experience comes into it. But that was with him till the end. From what I can see, Rodrigo de Trano and winning the Breeders' Cup mile, of course. Yeah, it, it's, it's like those other athletes I mentioned, chaps, uh, Tiger Woods or Maradona or Tyson uh, or Ali. Um, just to watch it as a novice, it looks beautiful, uh, incredibly smooth. And uh, you touch on a good one there, uh, Fran, Rodrigo Trotriano in the Guineas. He got horses to not so much gallop as float when he was in the groove and he stalked a really good horse of Henry Cecil's pursuit of love through the guineas and when he produced him it was like he just joined in and I suspect that there are a tiny tiny percentage of, of athletes who can make the game look so easy. That's the key to as you say to all sporting greats isn't it? Look, you mentioned GC he, he passed away at the beginning of Derby Week and what a shadow he cast mm. over Epsom. We, we've got a, a graphic of the time form rating to the Derby winners that, that the Leicester partner. There are some absolutely great names on that list. There are, from start to finish. Uh, I remember the minstrel, for obvious reasons, for the power he showed to win. But if you go back further in time, when he rode Roberto, picking up the ride in somewhat controversial circumstances, not for the first or last time, from uh, Bill Williamson. And he was up against a high-quality but much younger rival in Ernie Johnson, who was riding a hell of a good horse, Rheingold, who went on to win an arc under a certain L. Piggott uh, the year after. And if you watch that finish, and it's no, uh, no disrespect to the jockeys who were beaten, Andy Johnson, you got the clear impression that changed the jockeys, changed the result. Even in the Minstrels derby, you got the same impression. And that's the key, Fran. He was a massive difference maker in, in the close finishes, wasn't he? He really was. Uh, you see in Epsom in particular, couple of them close finishes to a you know riding style the whip use was different to what we're allowed to do now but he just made a difference you said Graham that inch and with the value of stallions and the difference of a short head uh, in the career and they obviously the uh, cool more funding and everything else that went with that it was a huge asset to have with you and uh, hence they wanted him and everybody wanted him on the big stage. It's funny Dave to think uh, about the derby when Leicester was in his pomp The Derby was a different occasion. The flat season was very different. You didn't have the Breeders' Cup and Champions Day and Art Weekend having such a profile then. The Derby was the focal point of the British racing summer. It was run on a Wednesday. There were hundreds of thousands of people at Epsom, people taking the day off, and everyone wanted to know what is Leicester riding. And he had this persona, Fran, this is interesting, the absolute antithesis of modern celebrity. He shunned publicity, he ran his own race, and in the public size front, that just seemed to make him even more of a rock star. Yeah, it made him more um, more alluring, didn't it? You know, people hung on his every word, and you see there's some great clips on Twitter at the minute, uh, you know, when he went to New Zealand to ride, or Hong Kong, or uh, even in Epsom on Derby Day, flying from London in a helicopter, followed by a camera crew. Mm, yeah. It's remar- remarkable to think of the time the attention that he commanded and said so little um, as you said it's the complete opposite of what you'd expect in the modern age at least but uh, he just had that or about him charisma whatever you want to call it and he obviously got the job done on the big stage one of the best um, things i've seen over the few days since his passing was a picture by pat healy healy photographers in ireland of course do all the racing and there's a young richard hughes uh, stalking Lester Piggott at the Phoenix Park to get a picture. Now, Lester obviously didn't get in for the picture, but Pat Healy hmm. said it took three races to get the right picture with Richard tagging along beside Lester. So, uh, you know, Richard Hughes on record saying he moulded himself on him. he done a good yeah. job of doing it, but uh, there's only one Lester. And just to reiterate, when he won his final of 30 Classics on Rodrigo in 1992, he was a 56, 56 year old grandfather racing post referred to him as the walnut faced uh, grandfather it, it, it's whichever way you slice it it is one of the most astonishing careers in 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 all the sport gonna agree more very few people in racing transcend our sport and lester piggott certainly did and how fitting that the the kazoo derby this weekend is running in his memory lester piggott who passed away on sunday aged 86